I normally you guys hide everything, so I'm looking for <laughs> So, so like, we can. when we yeah. go to a mouse site and we look at the view source, that code, usually you guys never wrote that code, it just was generated from your PHP script. Correct. Um. Well, they wrote the script in PHP, didn't they? Sure. Yeah, but oh, do you see the HTML that you see? Yeah. That, yeah. So, in this case, we have Visit Florida's website. Um, this is done largely with templates. We have a header template that does all the way across the top and it has certain things included in it. It'll pull some things out of the trip planner system. It'll look at the use user's cookie and it'll say, you know, it'll try to log that user in against what's in the database and it'll say if there's a match, then say you're logged in, welcome back. Otherwise, it'll have this login form. Um, it will pull these out of the database and it'll for each through the array of the top 24 tags that it's found and echo each one at a certain size. Um, same thing here, it'll loop through the eight experts that we have stored in the database and pull up for each one. It'll compare against the time. It'll say, give me the two most recent ones. It'll, it'll sort in the database, give me the two most recent blogs, and which one do they apply against. So we have Lauren has written one, and Terry has written one. Show those links. Um, this is how to really make a site interactive um, based on different variables. Variables. You need to have a database driven site if it needs to remember things. There's really not much use of building a PHP site that doesn't have a database with it because it's, just, it's like a brain with no memory. It doesn't. You, it can run in the moment. If you guys have seen that it's movie, like my no, web says, no, 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 so it can it can run a few pass it over. It will actually run based on that, but it can't remember. Anything. Thank you, Scott. Sure. For telling me about the love of brain. It's all the wrong. Don't throw. Just look pretty. Hey, it has a brain. It looks pretty. It all depends on what you want to do with it. If you're passing it variables, that's perfectly fine. No, no, I'm not going to do it to that point, but okay, now I see what to do. Oh, cool. So, oh, wow, you've got the Facebook. Facebook. Yeah. So, yeah. if you're building your site and like working on the PHP and you have a domain, how do you make it so people can't like go to your domain and see your site when it looks like crap? Like when you're still working on it? Well, you, um, don't, you don't. You don't put it on that. Like but I mean, you have to put it on the server to see it. Right. You can create a folder within it. You, you can create a folder within it. You can you can have it's it's like HTML. You have index.html is is the default folder is the default file and folder index.php is the same thing on PHP side. Mm -hmm. So you create an index.php file that simply says you know we're coming soon or maybe it has a countdown to launch or something like that. And then everything else is in some kind of subfolder that, that is not meant to do. Yeah, then nobody will see it. And the other thing you can do is you can put things in your script. Um, I'll get into this a bit next week, but you have get values. Anything that is in the address of the page up here that I was mentioning before, like test equals test or something, like test equals one, right? That's that's called a get value. The difference is a post value, which is submitted by a form. Um, and you can say at the top of your script, if get, and then you have this array of values that are called dollar get. Within that, if if you have one that is called test, then you run the rest of your script. But if it's if it's not defined, and I forgot to mention this earlier, you can use an exclamation point to say that something is not defined. You can say, "Sorry, site is coming soon," and then stop running your script. Just exit. Exit will simply cancel your script right where it is. It'll stop running. Period. Mm -hmm. That'll only run if this value is not defined. I mentioned earlier, and, and this is something I should just say to clarify earlier. Um, you can take any variable, you can define it in here, like we had sname. I said if sname is equal to something, you want to use double equal sign. If it is not equal to, then use exclamation point for not. If you simply want to see if sname exists, you need to put it in parentheses like this. If you want to say if sname does not exist, you want to put an exclamation point in front of it. Syntax I should have mentioned earlier. My fault. Boohoo. Yes. And I'll mention one last thing, which is helpful, and then we'll wrap up, which is uh, print r. Print r, you can run on any array, and will actually print out to the screen a chart of what is in your array, and that'll help with you when you're writing your code. So when you, like when the development team starts to build a site, do you guys look at all the PSDs or something and decide what needs to be PHP, what needs to be, uh, you know, JavaScript or whatever. Like you go through and like basically diagram the whole site. 
or sort of just kind of dive in. So we like we have a game plan, right? Right. We don't usually need to map it out. I mean, the first time maybe, but you get the hang of doing this, and you can just tell in your head what's going to be dynamic or not. Certain things. A copyright year is going to be dynamic. A list of experts is going to be dynamic because you know there's going to be new experts next year. Um, certain things are not ever going to change. Like the copyright notice, the year is dynamic, but the rest of the copyright notice probably is never going to change on the site. So that's just text right there on a page. You don't need to make that any kind of variable. Mm -hmm. So you just kind of know. Yeah. Um, and then you start breaking up. It's helpful to write the HTML first and get the framework of the page right first and then come through and replace those with variables. And get those variables drawn from a database or drawn from wherever they're coming from. So you, you do start with an HTML file, not a, just a PHP file? Uh, you get used to doing this enough times and you just start writing from, from line one, you just start writing all the way down the page and they're all just interchangeable to you. But um, then it's helpful to think in those terms first, to think what is HTML first and, and if you're not used to it, get them write that first. But then, then you would save replace. that file as a PHP file though, right? Mm -hmm. And then start replacing the variables within that. Yeah, normally you'll start first well, first we have all those like, the ideas of website. Then comes the design, and then when you but you, the developer is always in that involvement of how the thing goes. And then what he's involved, the idea would be like you already kind of know like what is going to be HTML, what is going to be the PHP, what needs a database, all that, right? So you start when you get the, the PSD file, then you start breaking down things, right? That's how mm -hmm. you. It's not just like me random come and just. You, you have to be always involved from the beginning to know what's going on. Correct. It's not yeah. like I'm doing a website and then you've never been on any meetings and then, okay, now I make it work. Right. You and it to helps okay. to have a design to, to think through it and to see it. Mm -hmm. um, the CA is very fond of saying that there's no, you can't make any progress on a website until you have a design to look at. You can make very little, like I mentioned, there's a config file, so you can create that and you can create like a database connection and maybe install a you know, content management system that you already have built. It's just including some files that are somewhere else on their server. Um, but there's really very little you can do to start building the site. You can put text on the page, and we've tried to take that approach, saying, well, we know there's going to be a contact us form. We don't know what it's going to look like yet, but we can start, you know, you know type them to, to get in touch with our CVB, right, and you start typing the form fields, and you can make it work, even though it doesn't look pretty yet. It'll just be plain black text on the screen, um, and it'll work, and then you come in later, and you apply the header and the footer to it once that's been designed. Um, it, it works, but it, 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 you don't really feel like it's finished until you can see it. Mm -hmm. In your browser until you can see that, and it's it's just slow going until then. Yeah. 